Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us discuss quantification of basic events. Today we will be considering the hazard rate or hazard function. The content of today's presentation is introduction, failure rate and or hazard rate, example bathtub car and one tutorial. So, you just let us understand what we have discussed in last class because um, this class has good relation with my last class. In last class, I have shown you the concept of reliability, concept of reliability, then failure distribution, failure distribution. So, we defined reliability as R x t, failure distribution as F x t and then we have gone to probability density function, density function which we defined as F small f x t, where is t is basically the time to failure, we consider non repairable units, repairable units. Okay. And, and with different formula starting from the scratch we have we have defined what is R A R T F T and small f t. So, for the time being suppose let t equal to 0 and then suppose you are going to equal to 1, 2 something something like this let it be maybe 100, 100 units of time. Then let you are conducting an experiment where you are putting suppose n number of identical units into operation and then you are finding out suppose a, let l equal to maybe th n equal to maybe 1000 and then what you are doing you are finding out that what is the number of items surviving after certain time interval. For example, at t equal to 0 the if I say C t is basically the survival units then here it will be a n which is 1000. And in this manner, suppose in the next unit is 900, then 850. So, like this, you found out that at the hundredth time that is 0. So, then number of units survived that is by CT by CT by N that is your RXT or reliability. So, it will start 1000 by 1001. Then this is maybe 0 0.90, 0 0.85. In this minus, finally it will be, it will be zero. Okay. So then what we have seen, we have seen f x f x t, which is basically one minus r x t. So one minus this will be zero. This is one minus 0 0.9, then 0 0.10, one minus 0 0.85 that is 0 0.15 like this and finally, it is 1.0. Then you have seen that uh, f x t this one, this one is nothing but what you have done that that number of units fail in n t plus delta minus n t by del by by n. So, if I consider these two, then 100 units fail 
and then out of 1000 units and that manner you have computed the FXT. So, when you go for the second time interval, you will consider the difference between these two third time interval like this FXT also we have computed. Today, we will be discussing that another important concept called hazard rate. Hazard rate. <clears throat> this hazard rate and with example we will be discussing finally the our that bathtub curve will be discussed and then one tutorial you will see. So, what is hazard rate? Hazard rate is or hazard function it is basically the probability of failure of a component within very short period of time let t and t plus delta given that the component survive till t till time unit t. It helps in identifying the health of the component in terms of increasing the constant and decreasing failure rate that also we will see later on. See what is hazard rate here. Be careful. We are saying that hazard rate is probability of failure per unit time at time t. That means, we are we have we have some timeline that is t and suppose this is our hazard rate h t. What we are basically interested to find out suppose the unit survive till time t. Then we are creating another time in interval that is delta. So, this point is t plus delta. Now, this is basically that that, that probability that the unit survive up to time t, it will it will it will basically fail within this small interval delta t. That is what is the hazard rate. That is why this is all this is also known as failure rate or more precisely instantaneous failure rate. Instantaneous failure rate. Okay. So, this delta is very small amount of time, very small time. Then uh, by by this definition, if we denote that R x t is the hazard rate, let it be R x t, R x t is the hazard rate, then it is number of failures during this period of time and we are saying that per unit time. So, that means, divided by delta if we put here we can multiply delta in this side no problem. So, number of unit failures during t plus delta t by number of survival at this time period. So, that means, R x t into delta the time period is this because we are interested in per unit time. In delta time how many what is the units fail? that number of survive here and number survive here the difference will be number of units fail in delta time. So, then per unit time it will be by delta. So, instead of writing here by delta you are writing here uh, multiplying this side. So, no problem. So, then what is the number of failings at this point in time that is n t. What is the number of failing that is n t plus delta. So, number fail of failures during this is n t plus delta minus n t. Then number of surviving at this place is c t that is what we have seen earlier. So, so then this, this one can be written. So, this can be written like this n t plus delta minus n t by C t. So, this can be written like this again dividing a, a in capital N which is the number of units that put under test at the time t equal to 0. So, if you divide this then you see what you are getting R x t delta equal to this f x t into delta where from this delta is coming. Suppose, if you consider delta equal to 1 what I have given in uh, few minutes back I said that n 
t plus delta minus n t by this, this will be your f x t provided delta equal to 1, but <coughs> we, we are we do not know whether the delta 1 or delta less than 1, but it is a positive quantity. So, then if it is delta time then it delta will be multiplied here. So, that is what a n t plus delta minus n t by a n will be f x t into delta. So, that is what is written here and this one is r x t the reliability part we have discussed earlier. So, this is r x t. Now, this delta and delta will be cancelled out. So, what is r x t? r x t is f x t by this clear if it is not clear let me explain again that our f x t will be the density that n t plus delta minus n t by n into delta because this is delta. So, now so, you have the quantity top side that a n t plus delta minus n t by a n. So, if I remove this, I have to write like this. This is what is written here. So, then this much is okay. Next is that where how you are getting this? Because see ultimately what is f x t? f x t is derivative of d by d x d i d a d t d by d t into its cumulative function f x t. What is d uh, that f x t that is 1 minus r x t because f x t plus r x t equal to 1. So, then if you take derivative this this will be 0 and this will be minus d by d t in r x t. So, if you write f x t in this form then r x t will be 1 by capital R x t into d capital R x t by d t. So, that means the hazard rate in terms of reliability. Okay. So, that is the definition and the derivation of hazard rate. Interestingly, it is basically gives three important uh, explanation one is increasing failure rate, constant failure rate and decreasing failure rate. So, depending on the this R uh, this R x t if it is increasing then the conditional failure probability increases with age we said that this survive up to time t and then what is the probab failure probability that it will fail in the next unit of time within next unit of time. So, conditional to this survival this will the failure rate will in, in increasing that means failure rate increases probability of failure increases with increase in age. If it is decreasing failure rate probability of failure decreases with units age. If it is constant failure rate that means there is no change in the probability of failure with the with age at least for a particular period of time. So, that is what is the explanation of hazard rate, but hazard rate is better un understood by uh, hazard uh, by bathtub car. So, that we will describe, but before that you please see uh, one tutorial here. We have considered t equal to t 0 to 100, so 100 different units. Please see that first 0 followed by 1 like this up to 5 the change is 1 unit and after that the change is 5 unit. So, then at the at the beginning the number of units put under operation was 1050 and then slowly as that age increases or time increases the number of units starts failing and at the at, at, at 1 unit of time that means the number surviving is 1020 and this we have discussed earlier in this manner. So, then the number of units fail during in between t equal to 0 to t equal to 1 is 30 
number of units failed in between 2 and 1 is 20 like this. Now, in what is our FT? Here you, have, you will have confusion if you consider delta equal to 1 all the time then what you will do n t plus delta minus n t by original that number put under operation that you will divide. This will work up to this. After that what happened here, here what happened this minus this, this is 5 unit difference. So, delta to be put. So, that means, f t here is n t plus delta minus n t by delta into n this delta will be 1 for the first 5 after that it will be delta will be 5. So, in this manner we have calculated. So, once F t is calculated and also you know the C t you know the R t also. So, what is R t? R t is basically C t by n. So, this now if I know R t and if I know small f t you know hazard rate because hazard rate R t is that density by reliability because this is the probability of failure uh, or other way it is basically it is failure density you know, within certain period how many what is the uh, fail uh, how many fails and then uh, R t is the survival function this is the conditional part. So, you have F t you have R t so, small r t is f t by capital R t in this manner you have computed and I am sure that you all will be able to compute this. You practice use excel sheet and take the same data. So, what data you require? You require only this t and c t data rest of the data will be derived from or computed from this c and t. So, you got now the hazard rate or hazard function or instantaneous failure rate and sometimes we say also failure rate in many books it is written failure rate. So, then if you plot this you, we have plotted this hazard rate and we got this kind of curve. So, <clears throat> if you see this curve here what happened from this point ok this axis little actually no no this is the region ok. So, tradition in general when you talk about the life cycle of the cis unit in usually it will be like this it will be like this, but from our data we got this blue colored that curve, but if we consider the life cycle of the unit that we then you will find out the hazard rate will be like this. If hazard rate is like this then there are three regions one region this one is the decreasing failure rate this region is known and uh, that is basically uh, we say early failure zone. And then after that what happened why this early failure actually takes place this is basically the DFR characterized by early failures or infant mortality and then followed by there will be a long period of time when the hazard rate will be constant. So, this is decreasing failure rate here constant failure constant failure rate and this is increasing failure rate. So, this constant period rate that period will be quite large compared to early failure rate and that is the burnout phase. So, then th last phase will be the increasing failure rate this increasing failure rate is basically wear out or burnout failures because that is the end of the uh, life of the unit under consideration. So, that is the beauty of hazard rate because it gives you the bathtub car and then and then you initially when the product under operation what will happen because of because of basically uh, that infant 
related means some kind of uh, I can tell you that uh, some kind of test problem, some kind of quality check problem, the product will uh, will face more failure uh, initially and then slowly those uh, those quality problem will be checked and finally, it will be rectified and then the failure rate decreases very quickly and reaches to the constant failure failure rate which is the useful life and then, uh, then this will follow and finally, here because of age effect because of aging effect the the component or the unit uh, will will very quickly undergo to death. So, that the three different region you will get in bathtub car. You may ask us that in the data what we have plotted this portion is not there it is although data is hypothetical, but if you in really in practice you got this kind of plot then that means the the component the early failure time that is not taken into consideration in the analysis ok because the, 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 the unit is very well under useful period of time most of the units and some units are under the wear out phase. So, that is that is what is the meaning. So, <coughs> what is uh, uh, let me read out little more as I say that DFR is characterized by early failure or infant mortality, CFR is characterized by a constant this is time independent failure rate and IFR is wear out failure rates. Now, what are the reason for early life failures? As I as I told you, they are basically you say they are not detected during testing or quality control procedure. And the defect may arise from poor material, assembly, installation, and other causes not covered during testing. That is the reason you get initially little more failure, then obviously reasons are found out and rectified and failure rate decreases. So, the constant failure rate is called useful life region very important and this is the time when the product or the unit is under full operation under full utilization. And the increasing failure rate near the appearance of possible aging phenomena. So, why because of definitely age means we are out worn out phase chemical physical environmental factors are responsible for such we are out also corrosion and other things will be will be responsible. So, what we have discussed we have discussed hazard rate and we relate it to the your failure density as well as reliability and then we have shown you through a tutorial that how the hazard rate is computed and then we have also uh, seen here that hazard rate is typically a bathtub carp and it is you will get this bathtub carp if you have data for the system life cycle and there are important issue is that the early failure rate will be will be quickly decreasing and this is because of the testing and quality problem and the useful period of life or useful constant failure rate period will be very lengthy because this is the period when the, the component or unit or the system is under full utilization and because of the age and maybe overuse stress the environmental chemical all other factors region what will happen the, the component unit or system may undergo we are out phase and then what will happen it will it is basically reaching towards the death you have to you have to dispose of the unit from uh, the operation ok. So, that, that is what is the meaning of hazard rate or hazard function. So, then let me summarize this what you have learnt so far in quantification. So, in summary you have learnt that x that what is the CDF cumulative distribution function that means the what will happen the if x is a random variable which denotes that the component time to failure 
then probability that x fell within time t that is what is f x t which is CDF cumulative distribution function. Then you have understood R x which is reliability of the component unit or system. Reliability means the probability that the unit and the unit will operate for the intended period of time under given environmental condition because for which it is the intended to, to work. So, that is what that is the probability that the random variable x which is basically time to period it exceeds the uh, in the time or given time t then this is this is nothing but 1 minus the cumulative distribution function because the ultimately for our component or unit is two state system either it is surviving or under it is failed. So, the, the f x t and r x t combination the sum of these two will be 1. Then, then what happened we have shown that you have done a random experiment and in this experiment n units n identical units are put under test and then you observe that how many surviving after certain time intervals and that time intervals is C t which is basically T V C T may be 0, may be 1 or like this or T T 0, T 1, T 2 like this uh, that time and then C T is basically the number of units survive at T equal to 0, T equal to 1, T equal to 2 something like this and N is the number of units under test at T equal to 0. So, as a result at T equal to 0 R x T will be 1 and slowly it will it will decrease and the, at the end of the life cycle it will be basically 0. But theoretically it is 0. And then you have learned also f x t which is nothing but the derivative of the cumulative distribution function and then what happened using using this formula f x t plus delta this is nothing but c d f with reference to time t plus delta and this is with reference to t divided by delta. So, if you as you you have you are conducting experiments you will be having the data available with you. So, a that that data is n t plus delta number of units failed at time t plus delta and minus number of units failed at time t divided by total number put under test and the interval of time for which uh, the delta that t interval of time you are considering your unit of time you are considering. So, this also we have the, you, have, you, have, you know now and you with examples you know how to compute it plus R x t which basically today we have we have discussed. So, last class we have discussed up to this. Today we primarily concentrate on the hazarded function and in last class also I, we, I have discussed that what will be the mean time to failure this is nothing but this or this equation. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is what is already done. So, in the right hand side there is a figure you just see the figure this figure uh, is basically talking about the parameters parameters for here we are basically considering repair to failure process or uh, it is basically repair to floor process is equivalent to non this is a system here non repair only one repair to failure means it is a non repairable system it is basically uh, once it fails you have to uh, discard it. So, the the, the para under parameter estimation what are the things given failure density it is discussed we have discussed cumulative density function we have discussed reliability we have discussed hazard rate or failure rate we have discussed mean time to failure. Okay. So, you have done an experiment so and from the experiment you will get time to failure data then from time to failure data you can develop histogram and then you can approximate the histogram uh, through, through some polynomial expression. So, that we have not discussed here we have basically given a polynomial approximation we have not discussed here. So, ultimately in the right hand side we are we are saying that the, the theory behind the or the computational details behind all those parameters given here but 
many a time what happen you will just take the time to fill your data and then you will derive all those things not the manner uh, we have discussed from the experiment basic from the basic fundamental or fund, uh, from the zero to law kind of things of this distribution. So, here what happen once you have time to fill your data you can plot the histogram for example, I have TTF data I can start from 0, 1, 2 like this and this side there can be frequency means within one unit how many fails may be let this 1 to 2 units let this unit fail 2 to 3 units let this fail this fail this fail like this then this is nothing but the histogram. So, we what is histogram because you your what is the variable x here or t time to failure. So, time to failure you are arranging them in ascending order then creating interval here we have create interval of one unit of time 0 to 1 1 to 2 like this then you have found out within one unit one unit of time how many fails this is the frequency and then within 1 to 2 how many fails like this when you plot this you will get this this uh, that attached bars that bar 1 2 3 like this bar this bar will basically gives you the histogram. Now, if you if you draw the midpoint of all those bars you will you will be getting a getting a curve. Now, here this this is almost a straight line, but it may so happen that your histogram will give you a curve like this or it may give you a curve like this when the midpoint are joined. Then by polynomial approximation we are saying what is the equation of this this one. So, if this is t and this one if I say it is f t then f t can be approximated uh, with in terms of t through some polynomial approximation. For example, if I say that this is the exponential part 1 then you can write that f t equal to may be e to the power minus lambda t ok. So, that can be a that can be an equation. So, it is lamb uh, just uh, I am not saying that this may be the equation of this I am saying this is one kind of or you may say that it is basically t q plus a t square plus b t uh, t minus 9 that is my f t. So, this is another kind of polynomial express uh, polynomial approximation ok. So, this is what is uh, the um, starting of the quantification of basic event that the how do I know the probability of failure the hazard function the reliability and other things and please go through the book the two books already given here I hope that you will be able to understand it and you will be able to solve the assignments as well as the examination problems. If you have any query please put in the discussion forum. Thank you.